Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Atenas. For this week's tutorial, we're going to be crocheting a Tunisian crochet beret. So let's get started. So let's take a quick look at the yarn we're going to be working with today. Now this beret is designed with a fingering yarn. So for those of you that can find this yarn, this is called Wool Like. It's sold here in the US. It is a size one fingering yarn. Now this yarn is available only at Michael's stores here in the US. If you live in a different country or you cannot find this yarn, you can use any size one fingering yarn of your choosing. So pick your favorite size one yarn and go with that. You're going to need two balls or two skeins in the primary color that you want for your hat and then you're going to need two skeins or two balls in any other color that you want. So I'm going to use the cool gray and beige and this is going to be for the brim. So again you can choose any colors you want. You can use the same colors or different colors. It's up to you. But you're going to need two different uh, balls of this yarn. Now for the hook, I'm using a four millimeter double-ended Tunisian hook. Now, if you haven't seen these hooks before, I did have, um, or I posted a video talking about this specific hook. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below. Otherwise, I'll leave a link to the shop where you can find these um, also down in the description box below. So now let's get started. Now I took one thread of each of the two little balls of the gray and the beige we are going to be using two threads simultaneously. So I grab one thread of each, we're going to leave a nice long tail of yarn, and then we're going to make a slip knot by wrapping the yarn around two fingers. We're going to insert the hook right through that loop that we just made, pull the yarn that's behind it through, and now you just remove your fingers and tighten the knot by pulling on the threads, and to tighten the knot further just pull on the threads individually. Alright, so we are going to begin with a chain of 13 stitches. Keep in mind that you are going to be working with two threads simultaneously, so you will always have to keep your threads together and work them as if they were a single thread. Now, the chain of 13 stitches is going to be the width of the brim. Now, if you want a wider brim, you can chain more or chain less to make a narrower brim. To make a chain, you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook, so right here behind. You're going to pull this top loop through this bottom loop to make a chain. So there's one, you're going to yarn over and pull through one for two, yarn over, pull through, that's three, yarn over, pull through four, and continue to chain until you have a total of 13 stitches. Once you have your chain of 13 stitches complete, we're going to work on a foundation row. So beginning on the second stitch of your chain, so skip this top one, right here on the second one, you're going to insert your hook into the stitch. So there we go. Make sure you go through both threads. You're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through. So you're going to cast on one loop. So you're going to leave the loop on your hook. Repeat this in the next stitch. So insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and into the next stitch and just continue until you have cast on one loop on your hook for every stitch of the chain. Remember that you've already had one loop on your hook to begin with. Go through and cast on the remaining 12 loops and at the end you should have a total of 13 loops on your hook. All right, so I've got my last two stitches and there we go. So once you've cast on all of your loops, you're going to work a return pass. Now this is a traditional return pass or a regular return pass. So you're going to yard over and pull through the first loop on your hook. So you're going to pull through this top loop right here. So yarn over and pull through one. And now for the rest of your row, you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. So yarn over and pull through these top two loops right here. So pull through one and then two. Yarn over and pull through one, two. Yarn over, pull through one, two. You're going to continue this until you are left with just one loop on your hook. All right, so we've got one loop on our hook and we've completed our foundation row. Now your foundation row does count into your row count. So this is technically row one. 
However, on the written pattern, you will see this as the foundation row, all right? So the next row we're gonna do is a knit stitch row. We're gonna quickly review this stitch, but if you take a look at the vertical stitch, it's made up of two legs. So it's got the back leg right here and the front leg or loops, if you wanna call them loops. You're gonna insert your hook in between both of them and all the way through. So you're gonna skip the first vertical stitch you already have it cast on onto your hook. We're gonna work into the second vertical stitch, so right in here. You're gonna insert your hook in between the two legs or the two loops that make up the stitch, yarn over, and cast on one. You're gonna repeat this in every stitch of the row. If you are new to Tunisian crochet, I do have a Tunisian 101 tutorial where I show you how to do the knit stitch slowly in detail and zoomed in so you can learn to work the stitch. I'll leave the link to that video in the description box below. When you get to the final stitch of the row, you're going to insert your hook right here behind the four threads that make up the last two loops or the last two legs of the stitch. So right through here. So you're going to leave this back one right there and just go right in between all of these. All right, you're going to yarn over and cast on one. So you still should have 13 loops on your hook. Now you're gonna work a regular return pass. So yarn over, pull through one. And then for the rest of the row, you're gonna yarn over, pull through two until you are left with just one loop on your hook. So for the entire brim, you're gonna work just a regular return pass. All right, so we've completed the first two rows of our work. Now the next two rows are gonna be made up of purl stitch. So the way that this pattern works, it's gonna be two rows of knit, two purl, two knit, so that's the row we just completed, and then two purl, two knit, two purl, and so forth, until you complete a total of 104 rows. Remember that your foundation row counts as row one, so complete a total of 104 rows, and then we can sew the brim together. Moving on to row three of the brim. Now we're gonna move through this quickly, and if you need a little bit more practice, I have a tutorial specifically for this brim. I'll leave the link in the description box below. Moving on, we're gonna skip the very first vertical stitch, and we're gonna purl in the second vertical stitch of the row. So you're going to reverse yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch using the top loop or top leg only. You're gonna release your yarn, pull it under the vertical stitch and behind your hook. So let's do that again. So it's under the vertical stitch and behind the hook like this. You're gonna do a regular yarn over and you're gonna cast on one. So there you go. You're gonna repeat the purl stitch in every stitch of the row. So let's do one more together. You're gonna reverse yarn over. So pull the yarn in front of your hook, insert your hook into or behind the top loop or top leg of the stitch. You're gonna release the yarn and pull that under the vertical stitch and then behind your hook. You're gonna yarn over and cast on one. So just continue to purl in every stitch of the row and you're gonna cast on a regular stitch at the very final stitch of the row. Again, I'll remind you that this is just a review. I do have a tutorial where we cover this brim specifically in lots of detail, slow down, and beginner friendly. So if you need help with this brim, go check out the link I left in the description box where you can learn to make this pattern. Once you have cast on all of your stitches, you are gonna work a regular return pass. After completing that return pass, you're gonna work one more row of purl stitch. You're gonna follow that up with two rows of knit, two rows of purl, and so forth until you complete a total of 104 rows. Once you've completed all 104 rows, you're gonna have a brim that measures approximately 17 and a half inches or around 44.5 centimeters. Remember that you do include your foundation row as part of the stitch count. Once you've finished, we're gonna work a bind off and the bind off is gonna close the space between the stitching like this one. And this is gonna be row 105. So we're gonna work a slip stitch bind off. And for this, again, we skip the first vertical stitch. We're gonna go into the second one. And you're just gonna insert your hook behind this top loop of the stitch or behind the top leg, yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're gonna pull the top loop 
through the bottom loop for a slip stitch. You're going to repeat this in every stitch of the row. So let's repeat here in the next one. You're going to insert your hook behind the top loop or the top leg of the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to pull the top loop through the bottom loop to slip stitch. So I'm just going to continue to slip stitch in every stitch of the row. Don't forget to slip stitch into that final stitch as well. And once you are done, like this, so I've completed my bind off, you're going to chain one, and that's going to make a nice little knot here at the bottom. You're going to cut a long tail of yarn, because you're going to use this yarn to sew your uh, brim closed. So cut a nice long tail end. So here we go. Let's move this yarn out of the way. And you're going to pull your hook out and the yarn along with it. So you have a nice long thread, pull on it to tighten your knot, and then you just have to sew your brim closed. So lay your brim flat on the table in front of you, make sure it is not twisted, and you're going to sew along the narrow ends. And once you sew your brim, it's going to look like this. So once your brim is ready, we're ready to move on to the hat part. And for this, you are going to need two threads from one of your uh, yarn ball. We are going to be crocheting with two threads simultaneously and I got both threads just from one of the yarn balls. So I got one from the outside pull and then one is the inside pull. So one of the threads is from out here and the other one is the center pull. Once you have your two threads you're going to line them up, leave a nice long tail end of yarn. Alright so you're going to grab your brim and I'm just going to go to where my seam is at and that's going to be my first stitch. So I'm just going to insert my hook into the stitch. Now if you can't see the stitch by looking at the side, you can look at it on top and you can see the stitches along the edge of the brim. So just insert your hook into any of the stitches that you want. You're going to make a loop with your working yarn. Remember to leave a nice long tail end. You're going to pull that loop through the brim. Let's drop our yarn tails. We don't need these right now. And we're going to begin to cast on. Now you're going to cast on the same way that you did for the foundation row of the brim. So as you can see, we don't have a very long hook, so you're not going to be able to cast on too many stitches. So I'm going to cast on anywhere between 20 to 25 stitches, and then I have to work a return pass. So to cast on, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So there's one. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, that's two and just continue on. So as you can tell right now I've got three loops on my hook. You have to count your loops as you go because you're going to have to cast on 105 loops on your hook. Again, you cannot cast all of these loops onto your hook. So cast on about 20 to 25 loops and then you're going to work a return pass. So let me cast these on real quick and I'll show you how to work the return pass. All right, so I've got 23 loops here on my hook. So to work the return pass, you're going to have to turn your work around so that you're looking at the inside of the hat. And now you're going to need two threads from the second ball of yarn that you're working on. So that's why you needed two in the main color of the hat. Again, you're going to work with two threads simultaneously. So leave a nice long tail end of yarn. You're going to make a loop and you're going to put this loop on your hook. So now to begin our return pass, this is going to be an extended return pass. If you haven't seen this before, I have a tutorial specifically for the extended return pass. I'll leave a link in the description box below. So we're going to begin by pulling this top loop, so the one that we just made and pulled onto the hook right up here, through the first loop on the hook that we already had. So pull that through. You can tighten the stitch by pulling on the threads below. All right, and now you're going to chain one. Tighten that up. You're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. So these next two loops on the hook. So yarn over and pull through one, two. And then chain one. Yarn over, pull through two. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two. You're going to repeat this in nearly all of the loops on the hook. So you're going to want to leave about four to three loops-ish at the end of the row. That way it kind of keeps your stitching all even and you don't lose your place. So especially because you're working with the same color thread on both sides. 
so you don't want to get your threads confused. So let me just continue my return pass real quick. And once you have anywhere between three to four stitches left on your hook, you're going to turn your work around and we're going to cast on additional stitches. So I'm going to stop about here. Let's turn our work around. So we're looking at the outside of the hat. So I'm not going to work with the return pass thread anymore. You're just going to leave it there. You're going to move your stitches to the front of your hook. And now we're going to continue to cast on stitches. So I left off at stitch 23. So now I have 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And you're just going to continue to cast on stitches and work the return pass until you work your way completely around your brim. Once you're at the beginning of the row, we'll continue working on the stitch. So I've got five stitches left to finish my foundation row. So I'll finish these off really, really quickly here. And then we're going to begin the puff stitch pattern. Make sure that you have cast on 105 stitches onto your hook in order to have the correct stitch count for this next part. So once you've got all 105 stitches, you're going to look for the very first vertical stitch of the row. So to find it, just find the tail end of yarn and then it's going to be the stitch right next to it. So here we go. So it's going to be this vertical stitch right there. That's the very first vertical stitch of the round. So we're going to cast that on as a Tunisian simple stitch. So insert your hook behind the top loop or the top leg of the stitch. You're going to yarn over and cast on one. So we're going to repeat this in the next four stitches. So go into the next vertical stitch and cast on a Tunisian simple stitch. That's two, three, four, and five. Once you have all five stitches, I highly recommend that you use stitch markers for this part. It's not necessary, but it will make this stitch a lot easier. So once you've cast on your five Tunisian simple stitches, slip on a stitch marker and begin with your very first puff stitch. So for the puff stitch, you're going to go into the very next stitch right here, and then we're going to yarn over. We're going to insert our hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and that's one. We're going to repeat this two more times. So we have two loops on our hook right now. We're going to end up with a total of six. So let's repeat a second time. All of these stitches we're going to cast on into just that one loop, okay? So yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So now we have four loops. Repeat one more time. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and now you have six loops on your hook. We're going to repeat the same puff stitch into the stitch right next to it. So remember that when you're counting your loops, you are working with two threads. So you will have 12 threads, but it's a total of six loops. So don't forget to double up your threads as you count your loops, okay? All right, go into the next stitch and you repeat the puff stitch. So right in that stitch. All right, so you're going to need another stitch marker, slip it onto your hook, and then begin your second puff stitch. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. So now we've got two. We're going to repeat two more times. So yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch. That's the second time. And then yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop for the third time. After that second puff stitch, I'm going to grab a stitch marker. We're going to slip it back onto the stitch. So there we go. And once you've got both puff stitch, you're just going to repeat the pattern over again. So you're going to make five Tunisian simple stitch and then two puff stitch, five Tunisian, two puff. So going into the next vertical stitch, we're going to do one Tunisian simple stitch. We're going to repeat this in the next stitch. So that's two and the next one, three, and the next one, four, and the last one here, five. And then you just repeat the puff stitch. So place a stitch marker. We're going to yarn over, insert into the next hook. That's one, two, three. Place a stitch marker and repeat in the stitch after that. So yarn over and insert the hook into the stitch for one, yarn over two, and yarn over three. Grab another stitch marker, place it right here at the end, and just repeat the sequence. Once you've cast on as many stitches as you can comfortably hold on your hook, you will work a return pass. For the return pass, you're going to turn your work around and then you're going to chain one 
yarn over, pull through two. So chain one, yarn over, pull through two, until you get to the first stitch marker or to the first puff stitch. So once you reach that first stitch mark, you're gonna pull on this stitch, so the one that you have right here on your hook, so that you can pull out your hook. So pull it out slowly like this. We're gonna remove the stitch marker. We're gonna pull that loop back on the hook, and then you're gonna chain one. And then for this one, you're gonna yarn over and pull through seven loops because the puff stitch is made up of seven loops plus the one on top. So yarn over, pull through seven loops. So one plus the six, or until you get to your next stitch marker. So yarn over and pull through all the way here to the stitch marker. And then we're gonna pull up the loop just so that we can slip the hook out. You are gonna remove the stitch marker, pull that loop right back on our hook, and you just repeat. So chain one, and then yarn over, pull through seven, or yarn over until you, and pull through until you reach that stitch marker. And we're gonna pull up that loop, remove the stitch marker, pull that back on our hook, chain one, and then yarn over, pull through two, and then chain one, yarn over, pull through two. Repeat until you get to your next set of stitch markers. So we're gonna remove it. We're gonna chain one, and then yarn over, pull through seven, or until you get to the stitch marker. So this is why the stitch markers come in handy, so you don't actually have to count all seven loops. All you do is just yarn over and pull through until you get to the stitch marker. It makes it a lot quicker, so if you're trying to crochet this, this hat a little more quickly, stitch markers are definitely the way to go. So you're just gonna continue to work this return pass and just turn your work around, cast on the stitches again, and turn your work around, work an extended return pass, and repeat until you've worked your way completely around this whole row. So once you get to the first stitch of the round, I will see you there again, and then we'll continue. So I've completed the round, and I'm left with just two vertical stitches. So they're right here. Now I have to work puff stitches in those, because I just worked my five Tunisian uh, simple stitch, and I'm right next to the first Tunisian simple stitches of the beginning of the round. So we're just going to repeat a puff stitch here, so in the second to last stitch. So let me just slip on the stitch marker, and then I'll work the first puff stitch, slip on another stitch marker, do the next puff stitch in the, that last vertical stitch of the round, there we go, and place the stitch marker, and there we go, we do have completed the first round. So now all you do is you begin to cast on your Tunisian simple stitches as you follow along uh, the pattern that you set up in the previous round. So we've got five Tunisian simple stitch. And then that'll bring you to your puff stitch right here. So from the next round on, we'll no longer have those two vertical stitches in which to crochet the puff stitch into. What you are gonna have though is these two puff stitches and you're gonna see this chain space in between the two stitches. You're gonna crochet both puff stitches in that chain space. So let's do the first one. So you place your stitch marker and you're gonna work your first puff stitch right here in this chain space. So I've yarned over, pulled up one, and then two, and three. So that's my first puff stitch. I'll place a stitch marker right here, and then I'll crochet a second puff stitch also in that same chain space. So let me finish this one up right here. We'll place a stitch marker on here and there you go. So this is what it'll look like. You'll have all 12 loops that make up the puff stitch or both puff stitches in that same chain space. You're going to move on to the next five stitches which is a Tunisian symbol stitch in each vertical stitch and then when you get to the next puff stitch you're going to repeat what we just did. So you're gonna work both Tunisian puff stitches in that chain space. So continue working the round in this way. You're gonna work a total of 10 rounds, and then I will see you again to start our decreases. So how do you know when you've completed 10 rounds? All you have to do is count the puff stitches. So first you have to find where your row begins. So my round begins right here where we have the yarn tails from when we first began that foundation row. So we're going to turn our work around, we're going to find that uh, yarn tail, 
and we're going to count the stitches, so the puff stitches, right next to the yarn tail. So I should have 10, so here's 10. I'm going to count the puff stitch on the other side, just to make sure that that is also 10. Because if you look at our yarn tail right here, this is where the row ends, and right here is where the round begins. So we've got the end and the beginning right here side by side, so you just want to double check to make sure that you do have 10 rounds. All right, and once you have double checked that, we're gonna begin the decreases, and you're gonna work the decreases in every other round. So I'm gonna need this stitch marker real quick, so let me just pull this stitch marker out, and then we can work on that decrease. There we go. And then I'll just leave about three loops on my hook, or four. All right, so to begin the decrease, it's going to be a lot easier if you place a stitch marker to tell you where the beginning of the round is because you are going to have to start counting your rounds as you work the decreases. So I'm going to place this stitch marker right next to my uh, puff stitch and I realize that this is not the first stitch of the round. Remember that we did have five Tunisian simple stitches which is what we first began the round with but it's a lot easier to work your decreases following that first puff stitch. So that's why I'm going to place my stitch marker right here, and I'm just going to count this as the beginning of the round. All right, so here's our stitch marker. That tells me where the round will begin every time. And we're going to begin with the puff stitch. So you're just going to crochet the puff stitch the same way that you've been working on them for the last 10 rounds or whatever. Um, and then right next to it in the Tunisian simple stitch space is where we're going to work the decreases. So let me get these puff stitches made real quick. And then just to make it easier to see, I'm not going to use the stitch markers um, this time around so you can see where the decrease is going to be at. So I'll work both puff stitches right here. And then we're going to move on to the Tunisian simple stitch. So we're going to crochet the first two vertical stitches together. So instead of having five Tunisian simple stitches, we're going to go down to four. So we're going to insert our hook behind this top loop or the top leg of the first vertical stitch and and the second vertical stitch as well so there's both vertical stitches you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through both of those stitches so that you are left with just one loop on your hook so you've decreased in the first two vertical stitches just cast on a tunisian simple stitch in the remaining four vertical posts so we're going to go into stitch number three and we're going to tunisian simple stitch and then into four and then to stitch number five. And then you just work your puff stitch. So I'll work these really quickly and I'll show you the decrease one more time. So I have to make two puff stitches right in that chain space. And there we go. So for the decrease, you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the first two vertical stitches together. So you're going to insert your hook behind the top loop or the top leg of the first vertical stitch and the second vertical stitch. So both stitches like this. You're going to yarn over and you're going to pull up a loop. And there's your decrease. Then you're going to Tunisian simple stitch in the third, fourth, and fifth vertical stitch so that you have four stitches on your hook. And then you just repeat all the way around. So the way that the decrease sequence is going to go is you're going to do this row, which is row number 11, is going to be a decrease row. For row number 12, it's going to be a regular row, which means that you're going to Tunisian simple stitch in each of the vertical stitches. So right here, you have five stitches for this row. The next row, you should have gone down to four. So when you do row number 12, you're just going to cast on a Tunisian simple stitch in each of those four stitches. And then you do your puff stitch. So then Row number 13 is going to be decrease. Row number 14 is a regular row. So again, you decrease in every other row, beginning with row 11. So your decreases are 11, 13, 15, 17. And finally to round 19. So let me get to round 19 and then I'll see you again. So we've made it to row number 19 and as you can see there's only one vertical stitch left and we're going to have to decrease that out. So this is row number 18, we are currently working row number 19, and you are just going to skip that Tunisian simple stitch. So you're going to work your puff stitch, you're going to skip to the next puff stitch, and you're going to work two of your puff stitches right in that chain space. 
So we're going to skip the Tunisian simple stitch, and then I'm going to place a stitch marker right here. And you're going to work your two puff stitches. So skip, puff stitch. So we've got one, two, three. Place a stitch marker, work a second puff stitch. So that's one, two, three. And then you're going to skip the Tunisian simple stitch. We're going to place a stitch marker right here. And we're going to go right into the next puff stitch. So you're going to repeat this all the way around. Once you begin round 20, we will meet again. So we are at round 20, and as you can see, you no longer have any vertical stitches between the puff stitch. We still have to do another row of decrease. So we're going to do this by just making one puff stitch in each of these two puff stitch sections. I guess we can call them that. So beginning on that very first one, we're just going to work a single puff stitch in that chain space. So before we were working two, and now we're only going to work one. So there's just the six loops for the first puff stitch, and you're going to skip and go into the next pair of puff stitches, and you're just going to crochet a single puff stitch in that chain space. So our work is going to look like this. You're going to work this all the way around, and once you get to the end of the row, and you have just that one final puff stitch, and you've done all of your return pass, we're going to finish the very last stitch of the return pass by Make, we're going to do a yarn over and pull through those seven last loops. We're going to chain one, and that's going to make a nice little knot here. So we're going to use this yarn right here, chain one. And we're going to cut a nice long tail end of yarn. You're going to weave this in later, so just cut a tail end right here. Because we no longer need to work with both sets of... Um, or both pairs of yarn, I guess you should say. So let's tighten the knot real quick. Okay, now we're ready to continue. We have to do one last row. So for row 21, we are going to single crochet at the top of each puff stitch all the way around. So if you look at the top of the puff stitch, you're just going to see this little line right here. So here's the puff stitch. This is that row 20. When you turn it over, you're going to see this stitch right up here. This is where you're going to single crochet all the way around. So using this thread right here, we're going to have to cast on the loop onto our hook. So just insert your hook into that first stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, once you have a loop on your hook, go into the next stitch. So here's that puff stitch and the stitch on top of it. You're going to insert your hook into that, yarn over and pull up a loop. You're going to have two loops on your hook. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops for a single crochet. Let's repeat that one more time. You're going to go into the stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to single crochet by yarning over and pulling through both of those loops. You're going to single crochet in every stitch of this round. So let me work my way around right here, and I'll see you again in just a moment. So we've made it all the way around. This is what the top of our hat looks like. And now we just have to get this last single crochet. And once you've completed your last single crochet, you're going to chain one. And now you're going to leave a really long tail end. You're going to use this to sew the top of your hat closed. So here we go. Let's cut our yarn. We're going to pull our hook out along with the yarn. And we're going to cinch the top closed. Now, depending on if you want to add a, like a puff or anything here at the top of the beret, you're going to cinch this a little bit differently. But I'm just going to show you the basics here, and then after that, you can add anything if you want to. So for this, we're going to need your yarn or tapestry needle, whatever you have available. Thread that through. And this is just a very simple stitch. You can use any sewing stitch you want. And no, you don't have to be an experienced so like seamstress. You just need a yarn needle and just one simple stitch to get this done. So for this top part, you're just going to insert your needle into one of the single crochets at the top of the hat. So right up here. You're going to go in one direction, so I went front to back, and now I'm going to go back to front in the next stitch. Front to back in the stitch after that, and then back to front in the stitch after that. So it's that simple. You're going to, uh, you're going to sew 
in every one of these single crochets along the top of the hat and then once you've made your way around you're going to pull tightly on the thread and that's going to close up the top of the hat so that's called cinching and I'm just going to do another stitch or two and I'll show you what I mean so here I'll lay this flat when you pull on your thread it's going to close the hat like this once you've worked your way around give it a couple extra stitches and you're going to make a knot on your yarn and then you're going to weave in your end if you don't know what weaving in your ends means there is a video tutorial at the bottom down in the description box where you can learn how to do that so you're going to have to weave in this end right here the one that's inside plus the thread that you're using as well as the threads that we have here on the inside of the hat so these right here you're going to need to weave those in as well and you don't want to just cut these yarn tails off you want to weave them in just to make sure that your work will not become unraveled if say you're to hand wash or just machine wash your hat so once you get that done you will have a beautiful little hat to match the scarf that we worked on two weeks ago and there you go you can find the written pdf pattern for this project on my website i'll leave a link in the description box below if you haven't subscribed to the channel hit that subscribe button and if you would like to see some more of my work you can always follow me on instagram Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again in the next tutorial.